We're rolling audio. We're rolling video. We're rolling episode 16 of Mags and Dad's Wholesome Chaos. How you doing, Maggie? I am doing very well. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Thank you for asking. You look super cute today. Thank you. I look tired. Yeah. Apparently. Somebody said that as a comment on one of your recent TikToks. So many. And you want to know the saddest part? Mm-hmm. I- I'm wearing a lot of concealer in that video. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not just your it's not just the marks though. It's like you can tell a tired pair of eyes. They seem heavier, they seem like unfocused in a way. And huh. I will worry about you because you're staying out super late now and you got friends yeah. and you're doing stuff. And I'll get into that later. I'll explain why I'm physically, emotionally exhausted. Um, but before we get mm-hmm. to But it's but I know what you mean. It's like when people say you look tired, that's um, not exactly a compliment. Yeah. You know, it comes across as it's not even really like I'm concerned for you. It kind of comes across as you look. Yeah, bad. and I also I have certain you know? features like I have visible veins under my eyes that already make me look a little tired. I guess so. I feel like I. Well, it's just supernatural. <laughs> Either your veins are thick or they're closer yeah. to the skin or your skin is more translucent. I don't know. But yeah, your veins have always been I prominent used to get, there. Did people ever oh, tease yeah. you about I that? I used to get bullied a lot for that. Even like what's so silly is like even like my senior year of high school. And it wasn't people like, I don't know. It, honestly, it was more like underclassmen. And I was just like, what? Anytime somebody like came up and commented on it, I had people walk up and just be like, did you know you have like veins under your eyes? Like that's kind of weird. And I literally, I remember it was like two freshmen and I was a senior and I just looked at them and I was like, is that really why you walked over here? Like, is that, was that the whole plan for this conversation? Cause it's going really well. <laughs> did, did you think yeah. this through? Um, I don't yeah. think so. I mean, it's your physical appearance. I like it's who it now. You are, and you can't genuinely. I I, like I think it it's unique. I think it makes my eyes look greener, <laughs> and so yeah, I, I think it's cool. Well, be- before we get too far <laughs> into physical appearances and green eyes and all the other things, uh, we got to talk about plus your questions and all our topics and travels coming up and so much stuffs in store for this episode. But you know what we need to do, Maggie? Is it roll the intro music? I think it is. Let's do it. <laughs> Mags and Dads, wholesome chaos. Mags and Dads, wholesome chaos. I woke up this morning. You know, I went I went to bed earlier than you because I always do because <laughs> now there's the time change. And um, I feel like we're living like two different realities. Yep. Like, almost like you work in Asia or Australia. <laughs> like we're on... Like I never am synced up with you anymore, which is one of the reasons I'm looking forward to seeing you and Eddie and mom in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, yet, the I woke up and you had sent a TikTok, which <laughs> is a little inside secret for our family. You know how we always comment on each other's videos fairly early. Mm-hmm. Um, we have this habit, right? When one of us posts a TikTok, we forward it to the rest of the family as if to say, well, oh, there you go, and make a comment, like it, and usually what we do is we forward it back to each other yeah. just so it, it gets to an additional... boost it in the algorithm. <laughs> That's actually how we got where we are today. <laughs> <laughs> the whole secret to Maggie's TikTok famedom. Um, yeah. <laughs> so no, so I'm, I see that you sent me a TikTok while I was sleeping, and I wake up and I open it, and it's this, um, you're smiling, you look great, and it's this... This, the caption is, uh, yeah, I'm just not ready to be in a rela- relationship right now. And then, and then it's, and then basically it says, has the same, you use the caption, has the same humor as you. Uh-huh. And then it's like, you put on this smile and it's like, oh, a, a, a hey, sexy lady is, the, is yeah. the music. And it's like this thing. And it's like, is Maggie telling me that she's now in a relationship? <laughs> and I look, and you've tagged Luke in the in the video, <laughs> who's and, a really good friend of mine, by the way. He's a really good friend know. of yours, and I met Luke, and he's a great guy. <laughs> but I'm like, did Maggie just announce to the whole world that she's in a relationship with Luke? Luke and and I'm hearing about this through a TikTok. 
That was my, that's, that's so how I, I woke up this morning. And <laughs> it, t- it took me a minute to figure out that that may not actually be the case. Oh my gosh. The really funny thing, dad, is mom had the exact same reaction. Did and she really? I, Cause I sent it to her last night and she was still awake. And she just texted me back and she goes, does this mean what I think it means? And I said, I said, well, what do you think it means? And she was like, well, you, you tagged Luke. Um, and then she was like, oh, just went to his page. I guess he started the trend. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's his, it's his trend or whatever. And then she proceeded to give me a good bit of dating advice at like one in the morning, which was appreciated. Um, but I, once she had that reaction, I was so worried that that was going to be everyone's reaction. But then actually instead, a bunch of people just started guessing it was different people in my comments. The funny thing is, it's actually not about anyone. <laughs> like, it, that is funny. That it, is funny because it, it, it's going to happen <laughs> inevitably uh, one of these days. I want to continue on that subject, um, you know, because it's definitely, I, I'm ha- I would be happy. Of course, I want you in a relationship, even though it but might cause me some- But I would tell some, you before a TikTok. I would not tell you through TikTok. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking. I was thinking I might need to seek some counsel on that. Uh, mm-hmm. And maybe maybe see a therapist or something uh, that I, my, my relationship had strayed with my daughter. You know, <laughs> speaking of therapists, um, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And it, th- is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Anything in your life that might be uh, taxing on you? Uh, like, for example, like we get a lot of questions on this podcast about really deep personal issues. And we want to help you. We want to answer them as best as we can. But Maggie and I aren't licensed therapists, nor do we really know your lives intimately to really give you good advice. We're going to help you. And we love to help as many people as possible with what we say here. Um, but when it comes to your needs, BetterHelp will assess them and help match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online. There is such a broad range of expertise available, which may not be available to you locally in many areas. And the service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy, and financial aid is also available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. You can read so many testimonials that are posted on their website daily. So visit betterhelp.com slash wholesome. That's better, H-E-L-P, and you can join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people are using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. You can get a special offer for Mags and Dad's Wholesome Chaos listeners that you get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash wholesome. And so let's continue that topic because I'm thinking that our our listeners are probably (laughs) curious about your your dating life and um, any kind of relationship yeah. action that might be might be springing up over there? No. Okay, so here's the thing. I, I talked about this on the podcast before, but if you missed it, I had a two-month no-boy rule when I came out to L.A. because I wanted to make homies instead of romantic relationships. I stand by it. It was really fun those two months, honestly, considering extending the two months. But literally October 1st, I moved out here August 1st. So exactly two months later, I went out with a boy. (laughs) And I was like, way too, I I didn't really know if it was going to be a date. It was kind of like more of a group thing, but then it it just became apparent it was more datey. If I had a dollar for every date I went on that I did not know was a date until I was (laughs) on it, I would have so many dollars. I just... I'm not always the best at reading situations. I'm working on it though. I'm not ready. The first part of that TikTok was true. I am not ready for a relationship. Nor do I have the time at the moment. Yeah, when we were out there, we met a lot of your friends and you've got a lot of great guy friends. And you know that brings, yeah. brings, brings to mind the question of 
um, you know, is there such a thing as a strictly a guy friend friendship when there is, you know, when you're young and you're attractive and you're single and it's complicated, right? Because yeah. one of you might be thinking, oh, aren't we great buddies? And the other one might be thinking, you know, she's your wife material. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> um, yeah, Honestly, it, I, I was I was literally thinking about this this week a ton because I realized I had a crazy week that I'll tell you about in a little bit. But um, this whole week, the majority of my friend group out here is guys. And for years and years and years, if you ask me, like, can guys and girls be just friends? Besides, I, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I would have said no. Like, no, guys and girls can't just be friends which doesn't make a ton of sense because like growing up, literally one of my best friends is Aiden <laughs> and like <laughs> he is a guy. Um, but genuinely, I think it 100% depends on the guy. I have guy relationships in my life where I know every time we're going to be around each other, it's going to be flirty and it's going to be complicated and we're not like homies homies. But then I also have a lot of guy friends, especially out here, who genuinely it's just like very much of a brother sister type of relationship and we are 100% friends and we have each other's back and so can guys and girls be just friends i think it depends on the guy and i think it depends on the girl that's an astute point and you know when you're going to find out who your guy friends really are is when you're when. in a relationship when you're when you're in a relationship and yeah. then when the guys who were kind of like vying for for position um how are they going to respond to that? Are they going to still yeah. be your buddy? Are they going to still be supportive of that? Are they going to be hanging around to see how it plays out? Um, yeah, but yeah. it's it's complicated. And it's also weird. It's got to be strange for you because it's like the longer it goes before you are dating someone, the the almost the more pressure is put on that situation. Do you feel that way? Um, you know, not. I'm confused by the question. <laughs> Yeah, I guess what I was saying. Restate. <laughs> I guess what I was saying. If 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 you were casually dating a few people, going out with this person or that person or this person and keeping it really light, that's one thing. But to say I don't date and like put that down as your ground rules, I'm not dating mm -hmm. right now, and then suddenly you break that that precedent. Mm. Now it's like, okay, something big has happened here. And maybe that's unfair to that relationship or just the date. Just say, you know, we're, are we putting too much stress on this? You know, yeah. obviously I want you to be happy and I do want you to be in relationships and I want you to figure that out. So um, moral of the story is, is you're figuring that out all the way around. <laughs> so tell me about your week. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let me just say, it is exhausting having friends. Um... When I first moved out here and I didn't have, I mean, I had friends, but I didn't have like hang out every day friends. My sleep schedule was a lot better. <laughs> um, and it here, I literally, I wrote down in my diary what I did this week. And there's some gaps because I truly don't remember what I did some days. That sounds weird. What do you weird. mean by that? I was 100% sober. Literally, it's just sleep deprivation. <laughs> I promise. Okay. Um, but Sunday, last Sunday, I had house church. And that was, I go to house church every week for the most part. And that's where I've let, met like a lot of my friends out here. And it's just a really cool environment because there's It's new, like, right? Like you're part of a, like the beginning yeah, of this church movement kind of thing. It's been up Love like it. maybe four months or so, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, so you've been there from near the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and like, that's where I've met a lot of my good girlfriends and it's just a cool environment because it's, we're in LA, like you go in and there's a lot of people who are like missionaries in LA. And then you have like a bunch of TikTokers and then like videographers and editors and models because it's LA and it's just like such a strange group of people and it's so fun. Um, so that happened. And after house church, I went and like grabbed food and that's when I met like like really started talking to like a group of like 10 people or so. And I proceeded to see those 10 people every single day for the next like 10 days. Um, and okay. So getting back to the diary, um, Monday we went to an abandoned zoo. 
in Los Angeles. I didn't tell you that, um, but it was it was really interesting, really scary. Um, lit crazy movie Tuesday. I don't know. Was it just an empty zoo, or were there <laughs> abandoned animals? No, it it was an empty zoo. We literally like it was a hike up there. You walked a while, and then you go through this gate, and then we walked into a lion's den. Nice. It was terrifying, and it's it's in the middle of the night. <laughs> it's like it's a pitch black outside. Like, a, were you uh, trespassing? Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What's I'm going to say, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Tuesday, I do not remember what happened on Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, this was funny. This is what I honestly really wanted to talk about because it was pretty late Wednesday night. And we were all like, ah, oh, what are we supposed to do? Like, what are fun things to do in LA um, at night? And so a friend of mine, we literally like Googled it. Like, how lame is that? We were like, we were looking up like, what are you doing in LA <laughs> like, at like night? Like tourists. Yeah, literally. And sure enough, on there, it says like, visit Hollywood Boulevard. And we're like, that sounds like a great idea. Let's go to Hollywood Boulevard. Everyone wants to go to Hollywood Boulevard. Is it two in the morning? Sure. But let's go. If you don't know this, Hollywood Boulevard is quite dangerous. Um, and I... <laughs> At two in the morning, I'm sure more than usual. Oh, and there's also nothing to do. Like, we all we did was walk. Like, we walked and walked. We looked at the stars. It took us, like, 15 minutes to find a star we even knew. Oh, my gosh. We were joking. So, you know, if you've been on Hollywood Boulevard, it's the one with all, like, the different stars where famous people get their names in it. And, um... It has a little circle within the star that has an emblem for what they're famous for. So, like, maybe it's a music. Maybe it's, like, a, a film thing. And I was, like, uh, waiting for the day when it's just the TikTok symbol in <laughs> <laughs> on Hollywood they, Boulevard. They need a whole, big, a whole new street for that. <clears throat> oh, my god. A gosh. lot of new names. That'd be you're, so funny. You're reminding me of a story, but go ahead. I'll uh, tell you in a minute. You tell your story about Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> My story's not about Hollywood Boulevard, but it's about Atlanta and shortly after I moved to Atlanta from Chicago. So I had a couple friends come down and same kind of thing. They were in town and we had this idea of like, we want to do something amazing and exciting and go find a party and go find something really, really fun. Um, and our only kind of like impressions of what that really looked like and this pseudo world between like being high school kids and adults was what we saw in the movies. And in the movies, there was always great parties going on in like big fancy hotels. <laughs> and so we took Marta down to Atlanta and we went to the Peachtree Plaza thinking this is a big fancy hotel. And in retrospect, this is so dumb, but we went up to the top floor. It's a circular hotel. So you walk all the way down around in a circle mm -hmm. to get back to the elevators. And we walked like around the elevator and then we went to the next floor and we walked around and we kept going down thinking that, of course, we were going to come across some big party with like, you know, celebrities and, and fun people yeah. and live music. <laughs> and, and they would just be like, sure, kids, come on in, enjoy our, yourselves. But we made it all the way to the lobby and there was no party. Mm. It was a big disappointment all the way around. Yeah. But uh, good story to tell some, you know, few decades later. Yeah. We also so, anything else about your week? Yeah, we um another night we went roller skating. That was really fun. Um <laughs> we I went to the Rose Bowl um flea market, which is like the second Sunday of every month. It's this big flea market in Pasadena. And I bought a few things. Um yeah, it's been crazy. I have not gotten home before two AM. In the past 15 days, maybe. So, yeah, I'm a little tired. Thanks for pointing it out, TikTok. <laughs> well, in the meantime, you got school. Oh, you have yeah. Your, your jobs. You have not only your own TikTok account, which is complicated, but you have the, the commitments that you've made to advertisers. Mm -hmm. And the way that works is people say, we really like Maggie. We like your brand, what you stand for. And we want you to, we want to hire you to incorporate your, our product or our service into your TikTok. And through your agent, they find you, they, you make a commitment and you make these products and stuff. And 
Like you're really good at following through on all of that. Um, of course, our podcast, we've got a family trip coming up really soon. Whoop, whoop. So yeah, so the question is, when are you going to sleep? How are you going to take care of yourself? Well, I was literally talking to my friends about this and I was like, you know, it's really frustrating that we never hang out in the daytime. Like we always see each other at night. Um, and we came to the conclusion that the reason that is, is because we sleep late because we're recovering from the night, but we have to sleep late so we can regroup for the next night. And so it's just like, we never, our cycles are like so bad, our sleep schedules. Um, and so I'm going to try and get better at that. I want to start waking up like, honestly, eight if I could every morning, but that does require me going to bed earlier. Um, yeah, crazy. I think that's a good idea. I support the the idea of you going to bed earlier and then trying to like acclimate your friends to some earlier schedule stuff as well. Yeah. I think that would be very good. It's also safer. Um, <laughs> I support that. Maybe maybe something physical, get out and about and go on a hike with them or go do something fun and exciting. There's so much to explore in California. Yeah. So Maggie, you want to field a question for us? So this is from Yasmin, and she says, Hi, Maggie and Dan. I'm 14, and I'm struggling with self-love and self-confidence. You guys are so confident in everything you do, and I was wondering if you have any tips for me to gain more self-love and self-confidence. Self-love, I mean, that's huge, right? That's, that's the key to everything in life is loving yourself, because if you can't love yourself, then how can you adequately love others? Yeah, and I... I feel like self-love has increased drastically in my life as I've gotten older. And truly, like, 14 is hard. 14, you're you're in the middle of school. You're just, like, in environments that can be very damaging um, to one's mental health and just everything. And, like, now I feel like as a 19-year-old, I can look back at it. And, I mean, there's so many things. I wish I could tell myself. I'm just, like, don't care. Like, what other people are saying and truly get to know yourself because you are the person who you're going to spend the most time with. And if you can't just genuinely be with yourself and like find satisfaction and be happy, then your life is going to be a lot less enjoyable. And that like directly links back to loving yourself. Um, Get to know yourself. Like don't be too hard on yourself. I think how you treat yourself drastically affects how other people treat yourself. If you're constantly walking all over yourself and like self-deprecation, which like I struggle with a lot still where I find just like putting myself down, it's going to make other people see you that way a little bit. Like if you don't love yourself, a lot of the times I think it makes it just less inviting for other people to love you. Does that make sense? At it all? does. It does. So what about the relationship? It's got to start with you. Yeah, but what about between self-love and self-confidence? Confidence. Are those the same or very different? Very things. different. Yeah. I think it's important to just say right off the bat, like you said, um, that we're so confident in everything we do. I'm not gonna speak for my dad on this, but I am I am not. <laughs> um, I it's interesting to me that it appears that way, but at the end of the day, like I'm still learning so much. Um, I'm still very new at so many different things in life that I don't have confidence in. Um, but I'm present in and I'm trying to have a good time in. Um but I don't necessarily have that confidence. And I think that just goes to show that like a lot of people don't know what they're doing yeah. and that's okay. Like, you know, the fake it till you make it, but also just like, I don't know. Get in the game. I don't you know. You got to get in the game. Yeah. And so the way, do you, the way I think about it is like a circle, right? Um, you can't be confident. The way to build confidence is to start proving to yourself you can do things or experience things that you didn't know you could do or experience. And so you have to put yourself in that place of vulnerability. You literally put yourself out there and there's a great humility that comes with that because you're gonna fall short sometimes. And so, but a lot of times you're mm -hmm. gonna prove to yourself, 
you know what? It wasn't so bad. Or I did fail and I lived to, uh, I still had a great time. Or I just, you know, I got to the other side of it and now I'm stronger for it. Or I'm better now because, you know, over time you just get better at things. And so, so it's like the confidence is, you know, I don't really like the expression fake it till you make it, but it's like step into it, try it, go, just, just, just enter into the game and then have the experience, suffer some humility and bring that back into the next experience where you can put yourself out again. And over time, you become a little bit more confident, but it's by not taking yourself so seriously. There's a huge difference between confidence and arrogance. And I would agree with you that, that we aren't always confident in how things are going to turn out. Like, but we're, we're confident yeah. that we're going to be okay. Like we're confident we're going to get to the other side of it. And regardless, I can stand strong in the authenticity of who I am. Yeah, you literally, especially in what we do, there's no confidence to say, like, (laughs) there's no confidence to say when we post a video, like, oh, we know that this is going to do incredible because at the end of the day, like, it's out of our hands. After we, after we put in our side, like, there's no knowing from our side. And it still bugs me if they don't do well. Like, it's still, I, I still take that kind of personally and I know I shouldn't. But, it's okay. but my point is, we're not immune yeah. to that. Just because we put ourselves out mm-hmm. there doesn't we mean we're immune from the feelings of, oh, you know, I hope this is okay. Or I'm, it's still a precarious thing. We all operate from that place of kind of precarious confidence. But because you have self love, yeah. it's okay. So maybe that's the relationship mm. between the two. Really good question. So. Uh, we're about to go to a wedding in Texas, we're leaving in just a couple days. Mom's already in Texas. This is the first podcast that we've done where she's not in the studio. Stephanie's in the studio here. And you're um, who's who's running your studio, Maggie? Me, myself, and I. Yeah. That's why you've had to yeah. get up and focus the camera a couple times and... And you know what? What? <laughs> <laughs> we, we edit around that so the audience doesn't know... No, it's okay. It's part of part of the magic and the and the uniqueness of our show. And wholesome chaos means a lot going on uh, all the time. So, mom's there in Texas. You're flying in from LA. Eddie's flying in from Boston. I'm flying in from Atlanta. And we're gonna see Clayton get married. And by the time this podcast actually comes out, he and Susie will be They'll married. Be married. I'm I'm feeling yeah. good. I uh, I fig- I got the whole ceremony finalized. I'm officiating the wedding. And so I, I feel really, com- really excited about it now. You know, it's going to be a good he time. He feels self-confident. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I feel confident in my ability to show up and be present in the moment. Because it's not about me. It's about them. And that's the main thing is I want to give them the wedding that they, that they want and that they'll always remember and appreciate. Um, Here is the, the crazy thing about this is as I was checking my flight information yesterday and... I fly out one day, stay a full day, and then fly home the next. It is a very short trip. And our job is to make it all about Clayton and Susie, you know, to truly, like, make this a special time for them. While simultaneously, when you and I see each other, it's a little bit of a rare occasion, and we make a lot of content. Um, I was planning to, like, film some stuff for some, like, YouTube vlogs, (laughs) <laughs> and I was literally, we have a few TikToks that we were planning on making. I was I was looking at the calendar and I was like, oh my goodness, how are we going to do this? While like in all of the social media stuff, like we are going to do not in front of other people because this right. is not our time. Like this is not our moment. That's just something that we need to get done because we don't see each other that often. I was like, wow, this is it's gonna be a little complicated. But we don't feel the pressure we have to do all that though, because I'll come out and see you again soon. You, you know, whenever you want me to come out there. Yeah. But I also did talk to Peyton <laughs> this and Susie is silence. Before uh, yeah, Sorry. I was waiting for you to say, Dad, I want you to come out there like anytime. Yeah, no, come I on. do. I do, I do, I do. You <laughs> should. My my place is clean. Josh helped me clean it the other day. So yeah, that's awesome. my house is very clean. Good dude. Good dude. So um <laughs> I told Clayton, there's this moment between when the ceremony starts and it like be, like when everything's ready, everyone's kind of coming in and we kind of step aside and there's this field we're going to go to to chill out. 
and you know, just kind of hang out and talk. And I said, yeah, we could make a TikTok, me and Clayton, before he gets married. I thought that'd be hilarious. <laughs> it may happen. It may not happen. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> We're not going to force oh it. Oh, my gosh. No, but I definitely want to yeah. come out there and see you and, and do more stuff. And um, you know that our rule still applies, right? Like What's we have, rule? Maggie grew up with knowing, hopefully, knowing that anytime, anywhere, if you call me, like, and say, dad, come get me, dad, I want you here now, I will show up. Like, no questions asked, no judgment, no nothing. You know, wake me up, because I'm not one of those dads that stays up late try, waiting for you to get home. I go to sleep. <laughs> no, but, he is but, not. But you can wake me up, <laughs> and I will definitely come get you. And so that, that still applies to L.A. When you say, like, dad, it's 2 in the morning, I'm on Hollywood Boulevard, I don't know what's going on, get your butt out here right now, I will be there in you know, five hours. So <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, it, it will be a hot second, but yeah, exactly. You know, what we need to find is a place in LA, like a, a podcast studio or something where we could jump in and do one of these, but make it real easy, like a place that we could yeah. borrow somebody's studio or rent somebody's studio or something like that. Okay, yeah. ready for another question? I'm gonna I'm gonna sure. com- combine two questions together. Okay. Um, because they're kind of of similar topics. Jaden asks, how do you learn to have joy even in the mundane? So we were talking about like wild, exciting things, big trips, huge opportunities, big adventures, new friends, etc. How do you learn to have joy even in the mundane? I've been trying to reframe my mindset around things to see the positives, but I still go back to feeling like my life is missing excitement. I'm a full-time college student as well, so I don't have free time to add in fun things. And then Kaylin asks, any tips on balancing fun and school, work, housework? I tend to always stay home because I have schoolwork to do and only go out if I'm invited, but I'll spend time doing nothing at home, worrying about the needs of things to be done. So again, like fun in the mundane, um, which when you get down to it is really the majority of life. Life is a lot of the in-between times between exciting adventures. Would you have any suggestions for that, Maggie? Yeah, I was telling my dad before this podcast, it's tricky because I feel like a lot of my answers to questions are pretty faith-based because faith is really important to me. Um, and like this isn't this isn't a you know spiritual podcast. Like that's not what we want to make this, nor do I ever want to like force my beliefs on you. Um, but I do find a lot of joy from my faith and from like knowing that my life and this this can, is like universal where it's like your life is not the only thing happening in the world things may be tough right now like you may be in a time where everything in your life seems to be dark but that doesn't mean you can't find joy in other things of the world um in friends' life, like other people's joys, finding little things that make you happy and literally searching for the good, you're going to find good. Um, we've talked about that, like, in this in this city where essentially you get out of L.A. what you put into it. If you're looking for good, you're going to find it. If you're expecting bad, you're going to get what you're expecting. Um, and so I think that's a huge thing for joy. Yeah, it's not just about the the question I don't think is necessarily about things that are always dark. It's just things things that are boring, things that are monotonous, the day to day, the in between. So like the, you know, and I get I get that. What I would say to add to what Maggie said is that the way you do anything <laughs> is the way you do everything. In other words, what I mean by that is you know, it's the little things that your attention to detail. How do you clean your house? How do you take care of this? Any project or any task that you're involved with, it's like I can treat that well, give it some respect. Um, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing yeah. well. Put your personal brand on any little project or any little thing. And what, what happens is you realize these ordinary moments that seem like everyday stuff, you can find great joy in taking pride in how you go through those moments. Mm-hmm. I I love to cook. I love to take a lot of preparation. And, and when I really focus in on the details, the individual knife cuts or the way that things are turning in the pan or cleaning as I'm cooking so that by the time I'm done preparing the meal, I already have the uh, the dishes cleaned and ready to stack. And like, 
and I get lost in that. And so it may be like a mundane activity, but to me it becomes a really interesting personal challenge. Yeah. Um, and so you, you've got to make your own adventure, I think, everywhere you go. For sure. Yeah. And be, and be grateful. Mm-hmm. What, what, are you, what are you grateful for, Maggie? So much. Oh, my goodness. My family, my friends, my bed, um, my car. I'm, I'm grateful for seasons. We're experiencing some great fall weather down here in Atlanta. Yeah. I'm grateful for public parks that allow me to go shoot videos at 7 in the morning or ride my unicycle on their trails. Um, coffee. Coffee. I'm grateful for rain. We've had rain out here a little bit this past week. Um, yeah. literally going about your day, even when things are mundane with like a grateful attitude, I find makes my days a lot more joyful. Um, yeah, it's just dogs, dogs. I'm grateful for dogs. <laughs> I miss my dogs. And black t-shirts, black t-shirts, probably the world's best designed piece of clothing ever. I'm grateful for overalls. I wear a lot of black t-shirts. I really like overalls. Yes. I'm wearing green overalls right now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot to be grateful for. <laughs> Lily uh, from France asks, she says, I love the podcast. I listen to it every morning when I'm going to school. And I was wondering, how did you become a motivational speaker? Um, there were a couple of people who asked about motivational speaking. Sarah last month asked about it. She's working on a speech that she's preparing on um, you know, values that she has in life and the way she values herself. And so I thought I would just say a couple things for those who are curious about my job, about what it is to be a professional speaker. I've tried to share more content about speaking on my TikToks, including some of the excerpts from before my speeches and even during my speeches. So if you go there, you can get a, get a glimpse of that. Um, it's I think it's one of those professions like, like acting or uh, any kind of artistry is when you see it done well, it looks super easy, it looks effortless. But then what you don't realize is it's a ton of work mm -hmm. in developing all the skills and all the like the intricate things that have to happen in order to create that moment where it looks easy. Um, and I've been fortunate to find this early in my life. In my mid-20s, I started speaking, went from the kind of the entertainment background into the speaking world and have been deepening my message, building my own self-confidence about what, it, what do I have to teach, what I have to say to an audience. And over time, you know, building an expertise that's about work and life integration and personal improvement and uh, professional excellence, and as well as the, you know, the skills to be able to take those ideas into creating speeches, going into a corporate environment. My clients are corporations, associations, yeah. people who are already having meetings. This isn't just about me. They're bringing me in to be a part of their thing. So I have to understand what their thing really is. And then I have to plug in and, and deliver in a way that gives them something amazing that they all can share in experiencing, but also creates a big success in their event. And so over the years, I've done that thousands of times and I've, I've gotten really good at it. Uh, but it's had a lot of challenges like travel. Like you, you talked about your trip to Austin being in and out mm -hmm. and in and out. That's the story of my life, like trying to make those quick trips back and forth. And that's part of that's kind of exciting too. I feel like it's the time warping thing again, where you're just kind of like, the making the most out of life and, and, you know, going from one coast to another coast and back again. Pretty amazing. How about for you? What's it like being a speaker's kid? Oh, honestly, I feel like it's a little, sim <laughs> a little similar to being a pastor's kid where it's like you hear what your parents speaking about all the time, but then you also know them so personally where it's like, you know their faults to an extent and like you just you see them all the time <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying I mean my dad's perfect what can I say um so obviously this is this is about someone else um but no it's <laughs> it's just I remember like whenever we got into fights a lot when I was younger the thing I would always go for was like you're a hypocrite because we see each other at every moment, our highs and our lows. And obviously, you're encouraging people to be their best self. And so it's just, it's tricky. And I've, I've had this conversation with a lot of my friends who are speakers kids as well, um, where it's like, there's just certain things that speaker parents say. Um, 
or just we'll be having a conversation and they'll just be like, let's let's talk about this. Or my um, one of my friends said in our speaker kids group chat, they're like, my mom just told us we're all going on a family retreat to talk about our feelings and set our goals for the next 10 years. And I was like, yep. Yeah, it sounds about right. Been, been there, done that. Been there, done that. <laughs> Literally. Remember the time I had a I hired a graphic artist to come yeah. in and sketch our family conversation? Yeah. Which you have to admit was pretty cool. You it thought was it was going to cool. be like this intervention. Oh, I drug thing. my heels for the whole thing. Um, but no. You got into it, though. Once, I did. Once we were in it, you, you got into it. Yeah. And we still have that, that design. Mm-hmm. We forgot was, to put TikTok on it. Because <laughs> TikTok, well, TikTok wasn't a thing exist. at the time. Um, exactly. But no, I it's it's just a it's a really cool thing, and I feel like it's taught me a lot. Um, growing up with with just that in the household, but I definitely like always pushed against it, you know. And I think it's because you are my dad. Um, And, you know, just as a kid, you want to be rebellious. And it's like, if your parents tell you it, then it's not true and stuff like that. So I apologize for that. Sorry, I was a pain. (laughs) You don't, no, you're being, you're being you. And part of a kid (laughs) pushing (laughs) back, no, I mean, you're, you're inquisitive, you're, you're curious, you're opinionated. Um, You know, we were talking about earlier in our family, it's, like we had a rule, like everybody gets an opinion, but the parents make the decisions. And mm-hmm. so hearing out your kids' opinions is really important. And, yeah. um, and and part of like knowing if the advice is actually true is to push back against it. And then to see whether your parents live what they teach. And over time, you know, as, as we grow, what I tell other speakers is you've got the messenger and the message. And we bring a message, which is like you said, it's the ideal of how you can be your best self or live at the highest level of gratitude or whatever it is in your life about being awesome and amazing. And then you've got the messenger, which is you and your life. And do you walk what you talk and do you live what you preach? And it's all of that. And over time, as you go through learning and the trajectory of your life is you become a more skilled person a more honest person, a more humble person. You've had those experiences to build self-confidence and you've also developed a lot of self-love, but you've also learned a lot of hard knocks. And like in my life of, you know, changing some behaviors and habits over time and learning how to cope with things in new ways so that the messenger and the message are more in line. And when that congruence comes in, that's when the message takes on this whole new uh, possibility because it's not about you, but it's coming through you. And you're like this vessel of communicating it with pure, uh, a pure resonance. Yeah. It like rings true in its authenticity. So that's been where I've strived to get to in my life. And TikTok and this podcast is just another example of that because it holds the mirror up and it says, yeah. are you living what you're talking about? For sure. And I think both of us are, we're, we're what, you know, willing to walk into that moment and say, yeah. We want that honest assessment. Mm-hmm. Well, well, this has been great. I, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see you again very soon, Me Maggie. Too. And is, any, any other final thoughts before we wrap the podcast? I'm just very, very excited to see you. Give you a great big hug. Give mom a great big hug. hug. Give Eddie a hug. I'm not going to list <laughs> everyone in our family by name at the moment, but I'm very excited to see family. And then I'll try to come to LA and then you'll come home for the holidays. And so, you know, back and forth, we should be seeing more of each other as this year comes to an end. So stay tuned, everyone, for all of those adventures and all of that amazing um, activity still to come. And yeah. in the meantime, if, you, if you've enjoyed the podcast, uh, please go out to wholesomechaos.com. You can check out our sponsors there. You could ask us questions there. And uh, tell your friends. Tell them about this, this uh, podcast as well so we can continue to grow this audience mm-hmm. and to continue to spread the message of how to live life with those you love and continue to grow and, and be uh, better messengers for each other. Right, Mags? Yep. Amazing. Follow us on our other socials if you want. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for listening. Have a great week. Uh, have a great couple days. I'll see you yeah. soon, Maggie. Oh love my you. gosh. I love you too. We love you, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Mags and dads, wholesome chaos. Mags and dads, wholesome chaos. So, uh,
I went to the store the other day and I bought myself a candle and I never understood like the hype of candles before, but my house smells so nice. It smells like, not Christmas, it smells like, it's a pumpkin bourbon candle. It smells like Halloween. Yeah. It smells like a drunk I, Halloween. <laughs> I don't really know what bourbon smells like if I'm being honest, but it does definitely smell like pumpkin and like a little bit of spicy. I don't know if that's the bourbon or if that's just something else in there. <laughs> but it, it smells very, very good in here. 